Hello, it's Natalie here from the Early Years Alliance and today we're here for an activity session, a Play-Doh fun session. So we're going to do a little bit of singing to get ourselves warmed up and ready to play. Then I'm going to show you how to make your own Play-Doh at home and then I'll share some home learning activities and ideas for how you can enjoy your Play-Doh along with some development and learning points to see what you're going to get out of this wonderful play resource. So shall we start by saying hello? Have you got some smiley faces and wavy hands today? Brilliant. Are we ready? After three. One, two, three. Hello, all the boys. Hello, all the girls. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you here. Well done, everybody. What a lovely smiley faces and wavy hands today. Okay, let's do another song just to get us really ready to play and this morning we are going to sing three cheeky monkeys swinging through the trees and we'll look out for mr crocodile after three one two three three cheeky monkeys swinging in the trees even mr crocodile you can't catch me you can't catch me a long came across the town, as quiet as could be, and back went the crocodile. Oh dear me! Got two left. Two cheeky monkeys swinging in the trees. He's in Mr. Crocodile. You can't catch me. You can't catch me. A long came across the town, as quiet as could be, and back went the crocodile. Oh dear me, just one left. One cheeky monkey swinging in the trees. He's in Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me, you can't catch me. Along came the crocodile, as quiet as could be. And back went the crocodile, oh dear me. Where have all those cheeky monkeys gone? Crocodile dog. Oh dear. Fantastic. I feel really warmed up now and ready for some play. So I'm going to show you how to make Play Doh at home today. So, grown ups, this is something that you can do with your children as an activity, an adult led activity that they can join in with. There's lots of opportunities for early math skills and for communication and language skills whilst they're doing this making of Play Doh, along with some lovely fine and growth motor skills. You could make Play-Doh by yourself in a different room and present it to your children in one of the ways I'm going to show you later, if that's something that you'd feel more comfortable with, but it's a lovely opportunity for your children to get involved and to really stretch that activity and that learning. At the minute, we're really looking for things that can entertain our children for a little bit longer whilst we're all at home. So this is a great way to do that. I'm going to get my Play-Doh things ready. Get my board, make it on top of. I need bowl, my spoon, I need flour, salt, my cream of tartar, I need my cooking oil, and a cup. I also need some water to make my play though, so that this is nice and safe for us all to make this together and for little hands to join in. I've just got warm water today. Think about a really lovely, nice warm bath temperature. When you use warm water instead of boiling, you do need to change the ratios a little bit. And I'm going to use a little bit more flour today because it gets a little bit stickier. Grown ups, if you're making this independently without your children, you could use boiling water. That will reduce slightly the amount of flour that you need. It's a little bit of trial and error, and I'm going to show you how to do that later. I'm just going to put that right, let's get started. So the first thing that I need to put into my bowl is two cups of flour. And I've just got a little plastic cup there. I'm going to use that as my measure. So I don't need to do any weighing, but it's a lovely opportunity for children to think about capacity, think about how much we can fit into this cup and what one cup as a measure is. So lovely early math skills there. Get my flour. Easy way to do it. I'm going to pop my cup in here. If you're doing this with your children, Cup in the middle, doesn't matter if some of the flour spills out of the cup. 
Oh, I'm going to shake, shake, shake the flower. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, a big flood came out then. Shake, shake, shake. Come on, flower, out you come. I encourage you to lift a bit with my spoon today. So I've got one cup of flour. Plop. Oh, here it comes. Shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake, shake. Another cup of flour. Stop. Can we give it a little stir? Have you got your spoon ready? Oh, it's all fluffy like little clouds. Good job. Please put the salt in there. I need half a cup of salt. I need to fill my cup about halfway. It's not super exact measurements, it's just a little bit of um, guidance. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit more or a little bit less in there. Are we ready to pour? Whee! There goes the salt. Give it a little mix. Oh, stir it around. As I'm mixing, I'm using the big muscles in my arms and my shoulders. And it's really important that those muscles are lovely and strong because these muscles need to develop to get the control, control the fine motor skills in our hands, ready for writing when we get to school. All mixed together. I'm now going to add this in. Um, I put a really big catering size on it. It usually comes in little sachets that you can find in the baking aisle in your seasonings market. Just makes the texture of the plain dough a little bit nicer if we use this. If you don't have it at home, leave it out. Your plain dough will still work fine. One spoon, plop. And next, I'm going to add my cooking oil. I'm using cooking oil today because what that means is that everything that is in my bowl is food safe. It's a food material. We wouldn't want our little ones to be eating lots and lots of salt because we'd be ingesting lots of this raw flour mix of our play dough. But we know that there's nothing going in there that is toxic. If you're making it with a slightly older child and you've got some baby oil at home, you might want to use that to save your oil for cooking if you know that there isn't as much risk of them popping it in there. One. Two. Two spoons of oil going in there. If you wanted to put a little bit of fragrance or some um, spices, nutmegs really lovely, or cinnamon to pop into your play dough to give it that lovely baby colour and make it smell really yummy. This is the point where you would pop a little bit of that and a little shake of that in there. So any dry ingredients that are going to add to the scent of your play dough, you pop that in right now. Get a little mix. Mix, mix, mix the play dough. Now the really exciting bit, we're going to put the water in. I'm going to do my water little by little to make sure that I don't have too much. I'm going to use my jug and I'm going to pour about half a cup into there to start with and I will see how I go. Trickle, trickle, trickle. Plop, plop, plop. This is a really great opportunity for to get lots of new words in there, really stretch that vocabulary of your children by talking about it as you're doing it and having lots of lovely new words like trickle and plop and splash. And really get them experimenting with those sounds. Starting to come together a little bit now. Can you see? Oh, what's yours looking like? Is yours starting to come together too? Oh, I can feel my muscles when I'm stirring it now. It's starting to get a little bit more solid. I'm going to put a little bit more water in there. Plop. Oh, it's really starting to look a little bit more like Play-Doh now. I'm going to give it a really big mix and see if I can get it to all come together. Mix your Play-Doh. You're having a mix, boys and girls. That's it. Get those spoons in there. Get stirring. I need a little bit more water in my play dough. So I'm going to put a little bit more into my cup and a little splash, splash, sploosh into my play dough. Splash, splash, sploosh. They were all words that 
Perfect. My play doh is really starting to come together now. It's getting to be all thick and sticky. Now, if you wanted to add some colour into your play doh, I'm just doing my play today. What you could do is pop a little bit of food colouring in with your water. So you're colouring your water, and then your water will colour your play doh. I've started to get a ball of play doh now. I'm going to make sure that I've got every last bit out of my bowl. Going to tip it onto my board. Oh, squash, squeeze, press, squish that play dough together. Can you see I'm starting to get a lovely firm ball of play dough? You're starting to look like play dough too. Fantastic. Can you squeeze your play dough? Wow, look, it's all squeezing through my fingers and I'm using all the in my fingers, building up the strength in my hands, but I need so that I can hold my pen and pencil and write. So really great skills ready for early writing. I think that is looking like a lovely ball of play -Doh. Now you need a rolling pin. I've got just a normal kitchen rolling pin here. What I also found in my kitchen with an old tin foil roll. Um, it's got a little bit of tin foil left on it, this one, I couldn't quite get the last bit off, but the rolls of this sort of product are a little bit harder, they're quite a thick hard and they're really great for using as a rolling pin if you don't have one at home. So have a little look in your kitchen cupboards and drawers, see what you can find. Would you like to learn a new song today? Brilliant, let's go for it. I'm going to teach you the roll the dough song. So I'm going to sing it a couple of times, nice and slowly, and then you can join in. Growing up, this song really encourages some great hand strengthening activity and exercise that goes with rolling the play dough. Are we ready? Roll, roll, roll the dough. Make it nice and flat. Wash it, squeeze it, pinch it, poke. Roll, roll, roll the dough, make it nice and flat. Squash it, squeeze it, pinch it, poke it, give it a little tap. Do we try that all together? Do we have a go? Are you ready? After three. One, two, three. Roll, roll, roll the dough, make it nice and flat. Squash it, squeeze it, pinch it, poke it, give it a little pat. Roll, roll, roll the dough, make it nice and flat. Squash it, squeeze it, pinch it, poke it, give it a little pat. Welcome everybody, give yourself a little snap, it's tricky learning a new song. Have a look at my play-doh, it's lovely and flat. wonder what else I could do. I know, I could break it up and make little balls. Ooh. I can squish it in my finger and roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it into a little ball. One, squish, squish, roll, two, squish it, roll, three, one, two, three. Great opportunity to add some counting into our place today. Right, boys and girls, I've got a challenge for you. I'm going to show all the grown-ups some more ideas of things that you can do with your play doh. And whilst I'm doing that, I would like you to see if you can take a ball of your play doh and turn it into an animal. And it's an animal that goes. That's right, a snake. I'm going to make a play-doh snake. 
So I need a piece of clay then, and I'm going to use my hands to roll back and forth, back and forth, and see how big I can make my snake. So that's your challenge. Are you ready? Off you go. And while our little ones are having a go at making some snakes, Pop these to one side. And I'm going to show you a couple more ideas of things that you can do um, to introduce and present Play Doh to your children as a great learning opportunity and something that's really going to engage them in their play. So, the first thing that I've got here is a selection of um, Pretend baking materials. So I've got some little plates. So I've got a little pan that was just out of um, my kitchen plate there, a little bowling pin, a cookie cutter that was out of my custom drawn actual baking one, and some cupcake cases. And you can see that these are really well used cupcake cases. They're not new. I'm not going to see the tiles new materials like this every single time because we can reuse things again and again. And what this provides your child with the opportunity to do is to role play baking. It's really lovely to do baking at home with your children. But right now, we don't have as many opportunities to go out to the shop and buy more materials, buy more flour, more salt. And if we were to bake some cookies, we would use that flour, and then that would be done. We'd have the lovely cookies to eat, but the play experience would be finished. When we make a batch of Play-Doh, we can use that again and again. If you put your Play-Doh into um, a sealed tub or even just a Ziploc plastic bag and keep it in your fridge, it will last for weeks and weeks. And that means that we can repeat that play experience again and again and reuse those materials. Lots of opportunities for talking in play, chatting in play, role play. If you have um, more than one child in the house, siblings can play together in this role play activity. And none of these things were bought as play zone materials, they were just things that were in other play sets. So role play baking, that's your first activity today. The next one that I've got to share with you today is something that you might present to a slightly older child, because I've got some small loose parts here, I've got some little plastic play crystals. Big choking hazard for our smaller children, you need to be supervising. I would give this to a child four years old or older, and I would still supervise that child, okay? But it's a lovely experience for them to do some counting with more materials. It helps them have an understanding of amounts, okay? If we're talking about three, we can count one, two, three. Three items. So it's really helping them with those skills. It's a bit of a space themed one, this one. I've got some magnetic um, shapes. So again, we can talk about shape there, we can count the size. This play though, I added some black food colouring, lots of glitter and some little stars to make it into my little space rock play bow. I've got a star cutter as well and some feathers. I had a little look in my craft box and in my toy boxes and I just chose a few items and I presented them for a child to engage in that imaginative and creative play. It doesn't have to be in a particular container, it can just be straight onto the table or if you're using play there's lots of food fluids in, you might want to put it on something like a chopping board just to protect your surfaces from that colour transfer that, that might happen. So we've got a little invitation to play, I would call it, something on a theme. If your child is really into tractors and diggers, pop some of their little vehicles in there, they can make tracks in the play zone. So tie that into your child's interest. The next one, this one's my favourite play though. I've got a nature tray. I've got some stick and bark, some pine cones, and some blossom that I collected yesterday on a walk, which is just sort of dried out now, um, but still completely usable for this activity. At this time, we're trying to stretch that learning and stretch that activity. Why not have a hunt in your garden, or if you're having a walk, and collect these materials then get your Play-Doh ready as an activity and then present them as something that your child can play with. That could be a whole morning play broken up there with lots of learning opportunities as part of that. So it's really extending that experience. The Play-Doh that I've got here, I wish you could smell this because it smells fantastic. 
it's raspberry tea flavour. Um, I made myself a lovely cup of raspberry tea. When I finished, I took the tea bag, I opened the tea bag up, and the contents inside is what I then mixed into the play dough recipe that I've just shown you. What you get is this lovely mottled colour, but the fragrance really does come through from your, your perch, your fruit, things like that. Just a little bit of rosemary up or mint that you might have in your garden. Pop that in your play dough. So we're adding to the sensory experience. The benefits of this sort of play dough activity are that your children are having the opportunity for that sensory experience along with developing those fine motor skills, but they're not getting frustrated. They're not trying to use a shop bought Play Doh cutter that the Play Doh gets stuck in and they're not quite ready for that level of motor skill. But what they can do is stick their twigs in there, they can print with their pine cones, they can sprinkle their petals on top, and it's all working on those same skills. So nature play though. And my last one to show you today is a little bit of everything tray. This is where I just thought, what could I put with this lovely blob of green play though that could be intriguing, interesting and exciting for a child to want to come on over and have a little look at it and have a little play. I've got the lid from an old coffee pot. So we can make some nice shapes in there. We can talk about the shapes. We can count the size on there. Got a clothes peg. Really great fine motor work out there. That squeezing motion. We can pin and put that play there and make marks in there. Some large buttons that we can use to press and make marks. Little sweet corn out of a play food set, a plastic one that's got little ridges on. So I'm looking for things with texture that we can roll across the play dough and make a pattern in there. What I've also got are some small plastic animals. They're great for allowing your child to keep those footprints in there. And there's a little tattered um, learning point there for sort of a preschool child or slightly older. I've just got some wooden letters out of um, a play, another play set. So we can talk about those initial sounds. I've got my tiger and I've got I've got my lion and I've got ooh, and I've got my zebra and I've got ooh. So having those um, letters alongside, if you've got the, the, the plastic um, magnets, the letter magnets, they're great. And we can use those to make those letter impressions in the play dough as well. So we're adding those literacy skills, those early phonics skills into our play dough activity. So, bit of a random spray. You will be amazed how interested a child will be when you present things from different sets of play in one place where they wouldn't normally see them. So it's thinking about play is our main resource. What can I add to that to make it a great play and learning activity? So a little bit of everything to it. So hopefully you've got some lovely ideas there for different things that you can do with your play dough. Right, boys and girls, where are those skates? Did you manage to make some really big snakes? You can have one last go. Get your snakes ready. Are you ready to say? One, two, three. Great snakes, everybody. Good job. I hope you enjoy playing with your play dough today. And I hope that you can take lots of those ideas with you. If you'd like any more ideas for things that you can do with your children at home, then you can visit our website, which is www.familycorner.co.uk. Do we have a little tidy up before we sing goodbye? We're ready to sing the tidy up song after three. One, two, three. When we finish tidying up, we'll sing goodbye. When we finish tidying up, we'll sing goodbye. When we finish tidying up, we'll sing goodbye to stay. When we finish tidying up, we'll sing goodbye. Great tidying, everybody. Give yourself a little clap. Remember, it's everybody's job in the house to do the tidying. So let's work together as a team. And when we've been playing, work together with our grown ups to make sure that we tidy up what we've been playing with. Even really small children can get into the habit of helping with that tidying up. I think it's time to say goodbye. It's been lovely for you.
you all to join me today for this activity session. I hope you have lots of fun with your behaviour. We're going to do five after three. One, two, three. Goodbye, all the boys. Goodbye, all the girls. Goodbye, everyone. 